Secretary of Health's Chief Information Officer and Director of Technology Solutions for the uh, City of Durham. Uh, I'm happy today to share with you uh, the City of Durham journey to the cloud. I'm going to tell our story and how we end up putting most of our backup in the cloud. How was a success story for us? So I'm going to share with you. But along the journey, we're going to talk about how we got there and what you should be thinking about as you think about going to the cloud. So let me go to the first slide. And I'd be remiss if I didn't share with you that the city of Durham is a tech savvy city. So we've been in consistently at the top 10 digital ranked city um, the last few years. And unofficially, I was actually got noticed two weeks ago that we're the number one digital city in our classification this year. So when we strive to align IT technology, we don't try to seek more, but I tell you, boys, it's good to share with you how you compare with your sister cities, right? Kind of get your confirmation where you are. And um, give some confirmation that you're doing something right. That's why we do it. We don't try to get the medals. We try to, but what we try to do is line our technology up to the business units. Ensure that the business units are taken care of and that the city risk for data loss is mitigated. So I'm going to talk about that today. It's mitigation of data loss. Reason one of the main reasons we're going to so let me start by saying it's getting cloudy. Everybody know what I mean by that? Yeah. It's getting cloudy. <laughs> right? What I mean is that more and more of IT is going into the cloud. You've probably heard of these things, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, communication as a service, monitoring as a service, network as a service. Let me get to show of hands. How many of you are using software as a service? See what I mean? It's getting cloudy. I've been using uh, infrastructure as a service. Not as men. Okay, that's good you in this session. Because I'm using infrastructure as a service. Uh, I'm buying storage. It's like it's in my data center. The infrastructure I'm using, it, it looks like it's in my data center, but it's in the cloud. I'm going to talk to you about that today. Okay? So that's where you get started. All the risks, real, or is a myth for the cloud? Have you heard about all these scary risks by going to the cloud? How many of you heard of those? Okay. Sounds so scary. Is it real? Have you ever thought about that? Is your thoughts about the risk going to the cloud real? Or is it perception that some businesses have that, oh, it's in the on premise, I got all the control? Um, I just had a discussion with my police department about body cam video. They want to keep all the video on the premise with the perception they have all the control. And I had to tell them, you don't have control as long as connected to the network, you just like you're in the cloud, right? As long as your data center is connected yes. in the act. Am I right on that? Yes. So it, it is the concern is really justified. To explore that myself, you gotta look at the data security risk. Then one of the things you have to think about what they should be in the cloud versus on premise. And for what reason? If you say, I want all my data in the cloud, then you've got to mitigate all the risks around all the data in the cloud. If you put in a subset of your data in the cloud, it's all public record, and those sensitive data is in there, do you need all that security protections around the data that's in the cloud? For example, I'm going to use Office 365. Okay? And are you putting your unstructured data there too? PowerPoint presentation, Word documents, are you using OneDrive? <coughs> so you're dependent on Microsoft Cloud security when you do that. Am I correct? So what you need to think about as you migrate storing data in the cloud, can it be encrypted? So you just have to use ID password protection and multi-factor authentication. So you've got to think about how critical is the data security. Then, of course, best practice is CIA. What are the CIA risks? Does the data management methodology incorporate CIA best practices? I don't have time to go into CIA, but you know, I'm sure you got security analysts and professionals that work for you. <coughs> Take a look at if you need some of that in the cloud. Can I get my data back? That's the data assurances. If, you, if I have my data stored in the source as my backup strategy, what if I decide to go to Amazon? Can I get my data back? 
can I get my data transferred to Amazon? How do I get? How, how do I change service providers without having issues? So you got to think about that. Then finally, what is the service that required for your data security? You back up to do what? Recover. So you build your backup strategy behind what do you want your recovery to be, right? And that best practice. You're not going to build a backup strategy that doesn't align to how fast you need to recover. So these are some thoughts that you think about as you go into the cloud. But I'll say to you from our experience, the risks are met. It is not uh, substantiated if you use infrastructure as a service because the infrastructure just provides you storage. It's not the security. The security still remains on-premise. I'll talk to you about that. Your security is on-premise, but your data is stored in the cloud. How does that sound? I mean, if they guess, if someone hacked your data in the cloud because it's encrypted, it, it, there's no access to your data. So I'll, I'll talk about that as we go through. Next slide. Strategies to achieve cloud value. So the biggest strategy you can, you can do in your organization is contractual relationship with your service provider. Make sure you have a good contract. We have a good contract with Microsoft Azure for us. And in your contract, you gotta think about what data security requirement do you want? What are, what are your data assurances? Can I get my data back? If I wanna change providers, is my data gonna all be there when I need it, right? Uh, what service level do you want? If I had to do a recovery, how quick can I get my data downloaded and, re and rehydrated into my organization? So we dehydrate our data when we go to the cloud. I'll talk to you about that. You want to dehydrate your data when you go to the cloud, and I'll tell you why in a second. And you don't want to just send it up there and take all that space. Cost for the service. You want to limit the future increases. We got our increases cap. No more than one or two percent increase per year. We start off, before we went to the cloud, deciding what is our business problem? You have to have a problem where you can solve it with IT, right? So we sit down and, for a second and define our business problem. The first one was, we don't have any backup tapes. And if we went to a new platform, all our backups were stored on disk, and then we copied to another data center on disk. Okay? Uh, but the problem was all of that was in the city limits. So what's the probability of a hurricane or a class five tornado wiping out the city of Durham? <coughs> well, I will say if the probability is there, right? That's happening in the United States. So can my two data centers in the city of Durham be, can be wiped out? If so, it'll be catastrophic to the city of Durham. Why? That's, what, that's where all my data is. I don't have the data anywhere else. I don't have a copy of Allen Mountain. I don't have backup tapes. So that was a big problem for the city of Durham. I had to solve as the chief information officer. My job is to protect the data, to make sure the data is, is, is protected from all risks. Having two data centers only mitigated about 95% of my risk. 5% of that risk was both data centers getting wiped out and all the data getting destroyed. See, the city could not recover from that. You agree with that? It'd be hard to recover from that. The size of the data of the backups were getting larger with the onset of video. Video becoming a big part of the record. When we do maintenance on, on uh, our water lines, they send in these little robots that align video taping the, the condition of the water lines, and they do that periodically uh, once a year. But that video takes up a lot of storage, am I right? Good. So, and uh, I'm sure you heard body cams coming on and all of that. So, you, your, your footprint of your data is going to grow. And you have to protect the data. And there is risk of data getting stored in fire or some catastrophic event like hurricanes or tornadoes. You need, you need to, to improve business resiliency. That's part of making sure I can recover from any disaster, not just 95% of the disasters, but being able to recover from. 100% of the disasters, no matter how low the probability is, why is that important? Because you can't afford to lose any data under any circumstances. Do you agree with that? 
Because you've got to think about that. Data loss is something the CIOs get fired for. Zero data loss. Your job is to make sure there's no data is lost in your organization, period. Then we want some added ice on the cache. We want to have an archival system, for email and unstructured data that can be accessed, accessed outside of our network. So we create a solution around that problem. We want to mitigate data loss due to a major disaster. We want to reduce cost to store data from primary and secondary data centers somewhere in the cloud. And we want to back to align the best practice from a recovery perspective, being able to meet the uh, RTO for the organization. So we came up with this architecture. We have our primary data center, and we have our secondary data center. We, we copy out with the data from the primary to the secondary, then we, we move both of those copies to a cloud presence. Now we purchased a product, and there's a number of different products. We, we, we purchased Combo, from Combo, anybody heard of that? It, it, it's cloud ready, and they're, they're not going to want to have that ability. But it, it, writes, it writes to the cloud just like it writes to a disk in the data center. But what we do before we send it to the cloud is that we deduplicate the data, we encrypt it, and we index it. And we send it to the cloud Azure. Okay? So we, that's our central repository. So in, in the event we have to recover from a major disaster, we pull it from the cloud. Otherwise, I don't ever pull it from the cloud. Why? Because I have back in the primary and secondary data center for daily recovery. Someone deleted a file, someone wants to replace something they have out there and want to pull it back. We do that from our backups on premise. We are planning for that 1 to 2% probability, I'll say 5 to 1 to 5% probability, that we have a major disaster wiping out both data centers. When we back it to the cloud, we back not only our structured data, unstructured data, but we back all our binary data. Everybody know what I mean by binary? The executables. We back everything to the cloud that it takes you to rebuild your data center. So we could bring a SunGuard data center truck and pull all our data back into a environment probably a day or two and be back in operation the way we have our data structured in the Azure cloud. So we can recover. Otherwise, it'll probably take, it'll take us uh, months. How many of you still on tape? I can see your hands. That's gone, isn't it? So we still on tape? Okay. We were on tape, but it takes, it takes a long time to recover. And then you have, then you have one tape that's bad in your, in your volume of tape, you, you're out of luck. So tapes is something that just takes a long time to recover from tapes. And uh, we've got so big with so many so much data that it takes just wasn't all my options for us anymore. Any questions about this architecture before I move on? So your only your primary data center only has its secondary backup in the cloud, not in your secondary data Yeah, I, I don't show that here, but I do have a path going from here over to the here. Okay. I don't show it. I just show the cloud configuration. Then I have both data centers pushing data to the cloud. Okay. So I have my primary backup in the cloud and also have my secondary backup in the cloud. Anybody else have any questions about architecture? How much data are you talking about? Okay. When you need to do it, how much are you sending to the cloud? Okay, and I'm thinking about from major disaster. What I primarily need is my most recent data pulled back. So I send my most recent data like the last two weeks of my most recent data to the cloud, deduplicated the press. So that's what you need when you recover your most recent. Combo will have 90 days of backups. I can go back 90 days on any, on any backup. Excuse me, let's see, turn it off. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should not always, you know, you know, every presentation make it, the phone all the green during my presentation, I'll forget to turn it off, I'll for that. Okay, so, uh, did I answer your question? I was just curious about the volume of data, how much I, you're having to purchase. Our strategy was two weeks of the most recent data across the entire city on all platforms, two weeks of the most recent data. And I turn that over every week. Let me 
terabytes of that. Uh, I'll show you on the next screen. Okay. okay. Uh, six to seven terabytes. Now you got to think about this. Take that seven terabytes and, and multiply it times twenty. Because when I dedupe and compress, my footprint goes down twenty times. So, so I'll, I'll compress it down to seven terabytes. And if you look at the uh, cost. And it could vary from $89 to $115 for that time frame. I think it's a month. So how you like that value for storing your data? Very low cost, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Kind of lower cost than what you what you could do it in your own on premise. And I'm writing to the cloud like I'm writing to the disk in the data center. Combo to the right to the cloud. And one thing you do have to be cognizant of there was a problem for me and the city was we didn't have a big enough pipe to the cloud. So they have now the offer at Amazon and Azure has now a, a, a uh, offering that you can have a straight pipe to their data center for a very low price. They can give you a pipe dedicated to their data center. But we're doing it through our graphic pipe, and we can do it in about two hours because we have a, a gigabit connection to the cloud. And we do it when no one else is using it through the pipe like at night. But what happens is that we, we store the backups. We have snapshots during the day. I'm, I'm going to tell you something that you need to be aware of. We got hit with ransomware at the city of, of Durham. How many got hit with ransomware? Didn't impact us. You know why? We take snapshots of backups all during the day. We take we take snapshots every two hours of, of all of everything that the SMEs are doing on my sand. Snap, 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 snap. And then we push it to Azure at night. So when, when, when ransomware hit us, we realized that it locked out the workstation, it locked out the data in the shared drives and collaboration areas, and, and they wanted a ransom. Way, recover all my bag, have to go back in op operation for an hour. We pay no ransom. And we got hit about three or four times. And the most we lost was a couple hours of work for the user. You know, most users just getting cranked up in a couple hours. It wasn't a whole lot. So we, 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 we were able to react. So backups strategy is very important to your organization. And you, you can't think about just backing up. You got to think about, okay, what if you get your ransomware on your data get locked out? Uh, how much? How much can you? How, can, how much can you afford to lose or pay the ransom? Yeah, have you ever thought about that? Anybody here pay the ransom? Probably not. I heard a hospital did. <laughs> they had to. I heard but, that more often they will than not. Right. Sure they, right now the trend is most companies will pay. Will pay. But if you have a good backup strategy, you won't have to worry about data loss if you have the right strategy. Snapshot during the day, back up at night, look at all your risks. The reason we prepare so well is because we prepare for that risk. We talk about what are the risks, uh, what kind of recovery do we need during the day? And we thought about what if we have a hacker come in. And we, we, I won't think about ransomware, but I'll think about what if a hacker came in and destroyed my data uh, and my production systems. You know, how many days can I afford to lose during the day? And we said maybe a couple of hours. So we use the EMC snap backup on the same. I'm sure you have the capability as well. Any questions? So looking at your backup strategy as a holistic approach is what you need. The cloud is a piece of it. And what I want to say to you is that on the next screen, because of the fact that we reduced our cost by a second, we're going to eliminate now this year for the first time, we're going to eliminate our secondary data center backups. I'm going to take that, those funds that I say I'm going to reinvest in the primary data center so I can get more robust security, things I need there. And then I'm going to depend on the secondary data center to meet those same security requirements at a much lower cost. So I'm, I'm able to leverage and reinvest my budget in a different way because of the low cost of data storage in the cloud. So I reduce the data cost for backups 
that improve his resiliency. Not only, not only is it, think about it from perspective, both days in the right dial, right? And I have to recover. We can locate anywhere. Don't even have to be in the boundaries of the city. We can locate anywhere and, and crank up our business for the city of Birmingham, the data's in the cloud. Am I right? We can go anywhere. So, so now, so my options for resiliency or recovery have been increased greatly because now the city can relocate the data center anywhere in the country. In fact, I can even stand up in the cloud and run out business from the cloud. They have offerings, Azure has offerings. You can build your virtual machines and everything in their data center and run your business out of the cloud. So you got a lot of different capabilities in the cloud that you try to keep it all on premise. How you gonna get your new hardware in? How you gonna get the electronics, I mean the, elect, the electrical cap, cap capacity to the data center? You gotta do a whole lot of reconstruction if you got a major disaster in your city. Am I correct? If it's in the cloud, it's all there. You can just recover and start up. Now we need connectivity to the cloud. That's, that's the approach we've taken. And also, I don't know about you, but I have a lean staff. So if I have two data centers and hardware in two data centers, more work. So we're about reducing the footprint, putting data in the cloud, and then my staff have more time to do value added things and not do KTL, KTLO work on a lot of <coughs> hardware. So it increases your capacity to do all the work. And also I have the ability to do dynamic capacity management with Google <coughs> or Amazon. You can throttle up and you can throttle down. If I go back to the previous slide, you can see that's happening in my cost. You see how the costs vary from month to month? That's based on how much data I'm storing in the cloud. So you can dynamically manage your storage. If you buy, if you buy a lot of storage in your data center, all of a sudden you don't need it, what happens to that storage in your data center? You're not getting a return on investment, right? Here, you're only using what you need. You only get charged for what you're using, so that's another that option you want to think about. Any questions? That's basically in the nutshell. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. I've got a quick question. You mentioned uh, backing up your binary data as well as your, your daily data. Is there any reason why you're daily backing up your binary data since it's basically not going to change? Well, Once you install an application, it's it's the same application. Well, I'm glad you're saying we're, we're not doing it that way. I, and I'm, if I didn't, didn't share that because I, was, didn't go in, I wasn't going deep enough, but we are policy based backup, policy based backups. So we only back up our binary when binary change. Oh, okay. You can set those policies in your backup system. And that's what we do. We have policy based backups. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Anybody have another question? You guys do for archiving. Okay, we use Envelope archiving. It, it allows you to archive our email and our structured data. Where do you, where do you store that archive? If you're, storing, if you're recycling your Azure every two weeks or every week, where are you actually <coughs> storing your? Now let, let me let me go through the basics. Um, backups are for recovery. Archiving is for retrieve. We don't have a a. What we put in the cloud for disaster recovery, it's just back. So if you want to re-implement our archive, we've got to bring it back down, put it back on our archive system, and then it can be retrieved. So what I got now is the disaster recovery option in the cloud. I'm just compressing everything I got back in the package and putting it in the cloud. Now if I have to bring it back, I have to go bring it back to the and hydrate it back into the appropriate, the appropriate system. Now, our archiving systems, our Envelope archiving systems, we have an index and our unstructured data is, is indexed so we can do um, archival retrieval. Now, I tell, the, I tell the, the, the users of the city, archive something when it's really, really ready to be archived. But you still collaborating on it, it's not ready for archive. And my analysis for archive is, like in your home, you really truly finish something, you package it up and put it in your base camp. Put it on the shelf, right? And you're not supposed to go back and get that thing unless you really have something special happen, right? So if you're going to be retrieving it every day, not a good candidate for archive. You may retrieve it once or twice a year, 
candidate or archive. Make sense? All right. So we have a we have a policy about what to archive. So we tell them if you read the archive and move it to the archive folder, within your shared or your your directory, and when the archive system comes in and pulls it out and put it into the archive system. When it puts it to the archive system, it dehydrates it, compresses it, compresses it, encrypts it, and puts it into the archive system. When you retrieve it, it unencrypts it, and it uncompresses it, unduplicates it, and put it back in production. So the time it takes to do that is seconds. It takes seconds to do that. It's not like retrieving something you store in your local drive. So that's our strategy. And why we do that is to save storage for archive. You compress it, encrypt it, and put it in the archive. It takes a small footprint. So archive needs to be ready for archiving. So I train the organization to sit and think that way. Don't archive something that you're going to be looking at every other day. Keep it in your work environment. Keep it in production. Now, the back of everything, back of is for recovery. When do you recover? We lose something, right? When you have a when you have to bring data back that was lost or a human error. I deleted the document, I need to get it back. So that cuts down the volume of a recovery request within the city of Durham. So you really need to think about how you are backing up. When I came to City of Durham, they were using backups as archive. And it took days to recover something from the archive. Now it takes a few seconds. That's, that's the difference. So we go find the tapes, load the tapes, go through the tapes sequentially, then you get to the right document and pull it back in. It took days to get one document back. And the users were not happy. It wasn't good alignment. So we now got a, it's on this, archive system's online. You can pull it back in seconds. But don't archive it until you're ready to archive. Question? Yeah, how, how do you handle extremely sensitive data like CJIS data and the uh, compliance rules that they uh, enforce on you? Okay, I'm glad you asked the question because police and thought we weren't CJIS compliant. They think that IT should be used to be looking at what's well, easy to come CJIS compliant. Go watch a video, get a little bit of training, and you'll CJIS compliant. So it's really easy to come CJIS compliant. So how we handle it, first of all, you have to define what is CJIS compliant data. Well, it's data only that came from the FBI database. So not all data is CJIS. Only the data that CJIS have to be encrypted at rest. So what we do, we encrypt the data from CJIS when it's resting in production as well as the backups. And the, and the staff handling the CJIS have to be trained and certified as CJIS compliant. Staff. So we meet those we, we meet those requirements in our strategy. Did, did you have to sign any uh, agreement with uh, Azure or whoever stores your data? I know sometimes. Yeah, and, and the contract contract relationship, they are CJ compliant. Okay. Can you remember that the controls <coughs> still in the city of Durham? What controls do I have to have on my data? The only thing they have is a container that's up there that we push data to. Who determines when it's deleted? And when it's turned over or whatever we do, Convo system controls the data in the cloud, just like it does on the disk. And that's the myth I was telling you about. You lose control, you really do not lose control. If you have a, a backup system that's cloud ready and can back up data to a container in the cloud, it's just like backing up it, backing it up in a container in your data center. But for added protection, we put encryption on top of it and store it in the cloud. So if someone was to get the data in the cloud, they could not break the encryption and, and see the information. So Azure doesn't have any keys to decrypt the information, only you have a key. Right, Tomco encrypts it. I want to let that go. We encrypt it on site. We have the keys on premise. We push the encrypted copy to Azure. Azure don't have any keys. That's correct. Yes, sir. That's, that's the uh, binary data. And all the executable, virtualization, server, all that is backed up to the cloud as well. We have bare metal backups going to the cloud so that we can recover our data center from fresh hardware. So if you have that 1% comes in, wipes everything out, um, your, I'll use Tomball, it's also. So 
you're doing your daily database backups, your key backups, where are you storing that, or are you encrypting that and sending it to the top two where you wouldn't be able to? We, we are sending everything we need, and of course, I'll have my infrastructure manager give the specific detail. We send everything we need up to the cloud. The only thing we need to recover is from new hardware, we load our combo software on the phone server, and then go back out to the cloud, throw it, pull it back down, and media, media agents, and then push the recovery packages back to the server. And it can push the way from hardware. Okay? Any other questions? Just yes, one sir. last question. Uh, are your staff and employees been taught or shown or trained on how to restore from a previous version? You mentioned delete, uh, someone may have deleted a file. Yeah, I know. Wow, this is good. This is a good question. So what we do is follow by backup strategy. If we do mark recoveries every quarter, we go out to Azure and pull back in and rehydrate and bring up a system. And we bring up our most important system. Yes, we think, yes, we think that is. No, that's not the most important. <laughs> <laughs> payroll. <laughs> but it's, it's your core business system. Your payroll, yeah. your accounts payable, right? Yeah. Financials, yeah. HR. We, we bring and build that system from the ground up. Because the back of no good, we haven't tested it, right? Right. So you need to do recovery back on the cloud to ensure it works. And how often has that been done? Has it? We do out once a quarter. Oh, okay. To make sure it's still the way we think it is. Okay. So you do have some type of mock we have a backup test environment. Restore. We have a test environment. We pull it all back. No, I have to pull it back in your production environment. <laughs> <laughs> just pull it all back into your, your test environment, and then it should look just like your production environment. And we have visitors come in and take a look at it to ensure that it looks good. And did you put that in your Azure contract that you can do a quarterly pull down from them and not get? Yeah, that's what you control that. Okay. But see, who's pulling it back down? Combo. Just like it's just like it, you know, just like it was on premise. All right. Do they hit right. you for any right. like yes. I'm sorry? regress charges or anything like that? Is, is that yes. Okay. Yes, there are. There are. These are not the charges to go back. I didn't share it with you. The, the, the charges are, are much higher to pull it back. But if you think about it, when is that going to occur? When you really need it, right? So what we do, we, we pull back a portion, not all of it, a core business system and test that because that's what we really need in this disaster, get those core business systems back up. And you know, like a statistical sample, yeah, if, if your core business system will pull back and work, you, you can assume the rest of it is, is, is good. Yeah. We look at samples, so now if I pull the whole thing back, it, it would be su substantially higher than that. But when do you need to do that? You don't need to do that disaster. And if you have that kind of disaster, money not going to be an issue, <laughs> right? So you you going to have the funding you need to handle that. But it's not, it's not too terribly bad. I just don't know what I'm talking about here. But, but it is. Quite a bit higher. Okay. So, is it in your your long term strategy to maybe go full blown infrastructure as a service, perhaps maybe replace one of your your primary backup data center fully, or maybe your primary to the cloud? Um, the answer to that is yes, on an incremental basis. So, you do everything. What we're going to do is put all the 365 and all the unstructured data there under that cloud umbrella. And as far as our structured data, our core business systems, we're going to start off with a hybrid, on-premise, and cloud, and see if we can switch from on-premise system to running from the cloud, because we want to make sure we get into that and know what we get into. But once that's proven to work, the hybrid's proven to work, we're going to move everything into the uh, cloud. We probably will not have a data center in the next five or 10 years. I, th I think it's I think it's getting cloudy, right? What are the risks associated with it? Now I'm looking at what I have to protect that's sensitive in the public arena is employee information. Think about the public sector, public records law. What's what's private? Employee information, HIPAA information, right? 
anything you, any business you conduct, anything you do with in conducting business of the city is public record, right? You agree with that? The public record law in North Carolina, right? So I want to make sure employee information, which is our sensitive information, is protected. That's one reason I'm, I'm not that uh, excited about rushing to the cloud. I still need to understand how sensitive data is going to be protected in the cloud. I think that the cloud is getting more robust, getting more secure, and I think in the next few years it's going to be there where we'll all be happy and satisfied with security. How many of you think you're safe now in your data center from being hacked? Let me see your hand. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You know why? You know why? Because we're just not a target. We're so small, we're not a target. If we were a target, you'd get hacked. And they can, they can hack the um, federal government systems. We think they have a lot more robust security than we think they would. Microsoft systems, right? Then, then they they will be able to hack us if they really wanted to, right? I tell them, say, man, all the time. The reason we not hacked, you know, because we're not a target. You heard you heard the story about uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, right? This, this hacking group called Anonymous hacked the city and went in there and locked them out of their systems and uh, took them down. Took them weeks to come back up. And at a four hundred thousand dollar expense, you know why they got hacked? Because uh, anonymous is a social hacking. If they, they did something that wasn't socially correct according to the hackers, so they got hacked because they, they didn't take the right viewpoint. So that's, that's that's where we would get hacked if we get into a political controversy. You know, in, in the social realm, there are there are hackers that are hacking because they're not socially correct. So, in the cloud or on premise, we're still targets for, for hackers or denial of service attacks. You heard about the one recently? Mm -hmm. They brought Twitter down for a while. Some, some of the other providers, Facebook, I think, is in there, right? They, they, they can do a denial of service, bring those big guys down, and they did a, a denial of service to you. What would you do? Have anybody got people that have denial of service attack? You have? How long did it take you to get from under that? Until it settles. Right, right. You hear what the strategy is that they go and camp out on people's computers that are online and they set up the hacking or the denial of service program on, on good people's computers and then they launch their attack. So it came from a million directions. The denial of service comes from a million directions. How do you stop a million computers from hacking? shooting denial of service request. It's hard. There was one online bank that didn't survive because the denial of service brought them down and never let them come back up. Never. Mm -hmm. And this is true. It went out of business. So security is kind of scary. How many of you putting more resources into security? For the first time we're doing security audits and we're going to be hiring security analysts. And we're weak enough, but I'm not sure we're going to be ever prepared to go against a professional hacking group. One of our single biggest expenses line items on an annual basis is probably uh, subscriptions to various, you know, try to spread it out a little bit so that right. our eggs in one basket, but for that defense in depth strategy, but that's probably one of the single biggest line items in my budget is, is for security and that And mine too, <coughs> increased cost in our budget for security, that's what we repurpose funds we save from storage into security, zero trust security. What I, my strategy is going to be hardening where they sensitive information for the hard, hard security around employee information. Harden that really well and don't try to harden public record information. So what if they get public record information? Public record, right? Yeah. I mean, anybody can do a FOIA request to get it, right? So I'm not going to invest a lot of security around public public information. Only the sensitive information will not hard to make sure that that, that doesn't get violated. Any other uh, questions? So what are you doing about your uh, 
body cam and in car camera video, are you backing that up to the cloud so that doesn't be used? I'm glad to ask that question because the uh, police department wanted to stay on premise with the body cam mm -hmm. and uh, we're not going to check the police. And, and my, my advice was if you're not already in the cloud, start first in the cloud with body cam. So we're going to put body cam in the cloud initially. Why bring the headache on premise? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Right? So, <coughs> the, the dirty up for body cam for storage? Um, looking at two or three, and I don't want to say when one would be you, and the other one was, it was two or three. I don't I can't think of their names right now. But uh, we're going to land with a cloud provider. Is, is the equipment vendor bringing their own cloud solution, or are you preparing that separately? And the vendor bringing the, the cameras and the cloud solution. One, Turnkey solution. And uh, you know, my philosophy is if, if you don't have it already on premise, you start on from scratch, take a whole look at the cloud solution. Cloud first. My philosophy is cloud first, you know, you should do and figure out why it can't work in the cloud. Then you just about why it can't be in cloud, bring it on premise. That's the way you should start looking at new applications. I hope you agree with me. Mm -hmm. Because war robust security is in the cloud, the ongoing preventative maintenance, security patching, and all of that is done for you in, in the cloud, right? Then think about it from a perspective what if we have a long term solution and some videos get lost or some half of the videos in the on premise? That's a much bigger problem than it was considered the cloud and blame the cloud provider, right? Mm -hmm. When we send it to the cloud, and bring the dedication against the cloud provider. You don't know what happened to the video. But if it's on the frame, it could be seen as what, sabotage or some other reason why the video suddenly got lost, right? And it could be just a technical glitch that the video they land or got corrupt. So we're looking at it from all aspects. We look at the solution, look at it from all aspects. But, but in the long term, the cloud is going to be the lowest cost for body cam to lose. I can guarantee you on the long term. Body count is in the cloud and the lower cost for your overall. Any other questions? So, um, how long would it take to upload a nightly backup of what size type you have? Okay, we have policies. Let me just say that first. We have combo policy. And we have, right now, we have a 400 megabit pipe pushing on backups. And what my infrastructure is telling me, man, is telling me, do we have no backup in the week and be full on the weekends? Less than an hour during the week, and about two or three hours on the weekend. And you know, I don't see it all the way over, I don't see it all the time. I go see it on the weekend, so nobody, so we can push all that data up to the cloud without impacting any of the issues. Public safety is still working on the weekend, but connectivity to the cloud is not used that heavily on the weekend. <coughs> we're going to go to, this year, we're going to go to two gigabit connection to the cloud, but we're bringing up Office 365 and we're bringing up the body cam system. So we're going to go to two gig connections to the cloud. For two service providers, we're low balancing on using a low balancing solution. What low balancing solution are you going to use for that to turn that? We, we, we use FatPack right now. And it does a good job. FatPack allows you to bring in and any number of connections to the cloud you want. You probably know that already. And then you can load balances the traffic to the cloud. So it makes sure that the car gets on the right highway to there's no congestion that pipe. And right now we have three connections to the cloud. This is, this is great questions. Just one last dumb question. Okay. Uh, as far as the cloud service provider, before you signed the contract, did they break it down as to how they're backing up what you're sending to them to be backed up? Well, mine is a little bit simpler than that. All I, all I talked to them about was the data assurances, data security. I have all the control for writing the data to the container. I just want to make sure is the container secure, and, and do I can I have access to my data when I need to have access to my data, and can we get the data back and transfer it to another service provider? Because <coughs> we hold the keys to the encryption, they do not, and we encrypt all our data before it goes in the cloud. 
that that's a curious the access class. Okay. Any questions? I hope you're all thinking about infrastructure as a service, as a possibility. Because uh, it's just to get the right backup solution, it's just like writing the disk in your data center. That's the message of my service. It's just you have all the control. And the, and the cost, as you see, sorry. It's still post pump. Here we go. Very affordable. Six to seven terabytes of deep compress, $115 a month. And you, and you can do some multiplication. <laughs> and you can see that's just very affordable this store. You can't need to cost to store data in the You're not going to need it for a megabyte cost. It's just, it's just it leverage, you can leverage the storage cost the entire time as you can. Oh, we have an 80% compression, they do, so you can get them multiply that times uh, uh, four. So we store about 28 terabytes uncompressed. Thank you.